Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. I wanted to go over two stocks today. One that I'm most bearish on, other than Truth Social. You guys all know that one. <laughs> that is by far the one I'm most bearish on. And the other that I'm most bullish on. And then I want to go over how this fits into my new style of investing or the evolution of my investment process and my investment strategy where I'm layering over this additional trading portfolio, this model portfolio, uh, $100,000, by the way, not paper trading, it's real money. And this is something that I'm going to be discussing in depth tomorrow on that webinar in Rebel Capitalist Pro. So if you want to take part of that, you can go to georgegammon.com forward slash pro. We're going to be doing that tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. But let me give you a little bit of a preview right now. And if you guys saw my first video on this, you know that my starting point, because I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Let's make that very, very clear. So my starting point is going back to something that I actually do have a lot of experience with, and that is blackjack. So I'm the, the first iteration and the first thing that I'm throwing up against a wall to see what sticks is this idea of trying to mimic to the greatest degree blackjack with this trading portfolio. So the other day we went over money management, how many units you want to start with. Now we might make some changes there uh, based on kind of, you know, I haven't read this book in a long time. I've read it a thousand times, not this specific one, but uh, uh, anyway, bottom line is I haven't read it for a long time. And every single time you read a new book, you learn something new. So I, I've gone through, I might adjust that slightly. I said 30 units the other day, but uh, we'll get that figured out by tomorrow. But another thing that I want to go over is this use of the binomial calculator, because this is something that was really integral to my success as an entrepreneur. And it's definitely something I want to use in this trading strategy. So first and foremost, let's go over the bearish and bullish stuff. And we'll do the old screen share. <laughs> it says, George is going to lose $100,000 on trading, but make two hundred dollars on Rebel Capitals Pro. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be good. That would be a good strategy. But no, unfortunately, the the math doesn't work that way, my friend. <laughs> but I I do agree that I'll most likely lose the hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So this may come as no surprise, but the stock I'm probably most bearish on right now is Tesla. And you look at the chart; it's looking ugly. But uh, you guys have heard the news. It's all about Tesla, uh, you know, having more competitors. Uh, they're a quote unquote growth stock with no growth. In fact, their sales are probably declining. They've cut the prices of not only their vehicles, but I saw the other day they're cutting prices of the prepayments for autonomous driving, which doesn't even exist. And they're uh, also having to slash workers. I think they announced that they're going to fire or lay off over 10% of their staff. And I think I read more specifically, that's going to be about 14 or 15%. When you see that stuff, it's never a good sign. Never, ever a good sign. And some anecdotal evidence that I'll give you is when I'm here in Columbia, I do see electric cars uh, quite frequently, especially in the area where I live. But I never see a Tesla. Uh, maybe once every two months. I'll tell you what I do see constantly are Chinese cars. Constantly, 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 as far as the electric vehicles. Now, granted, 99.999% of the cars you see are not electric. Uh, but out of that small percentage that are, the vast majority you see are Chinese and then hybrids. The hybrids are almost always Toyotas. So then going back to the trip that I took in Argentina, if you haven't been there, it would blow your mind the percentage of Chinese cars down there. It's like, I would say it's probably 30 or 
it seems like every single car you see on the road is Chinese, 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 Chinese. And in fact, I, uh, Ali, who works for me, who's another car guy, he showed me this new model that BYD, which is one of the major electric car companies in China, has just come out and released for the Colombian market. And you can buy it for 70 million pesos, which sounds like a lot, but that is cheap. That is insanely cheap. In fact, that's cheap for a normal car. Uh, to give you some context, that's see what is that going to be? That's for that's right around eighteen thousand dollars, which may sound like a lot for a brand new car, but you've got to remember all the import taxes we have here. The cars overall are way more expensive than they are in the United States. So to have a brand new car that costs like seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars, that is insanely cheap. Especially, and that's considering gas cars, not just electric. And this new model, I think it's called a Seagull or something like that, is is priced right around 70 million pesos. And so when you want to talk about competition, I mean, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but I can't imagine how this is really going to eat into Tesla market share. Maybe not in the United States, especially with the Chinese cars. But in all these growth markets, they have number one being China <laughs> for heaven's sakes. Uh, another piece of anecdotal evidence. I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts called it's Andres Seno Larson. Is it uh, Sunday? Oh, what is it? I want to give him a shout out here because it's really a fantastic on podcast. And I always remember his name. A real good guy. I've talked to him a few times. Uh, Macro Sunday. There we go. So I want to give them a, a, a shout out. Great podcast. But they were talking about how electric vehicles are so popular in uh, in Northern Europe, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, etc. And they a year ago, he said that there is no way he would have ever thought that China would have been able to penetrate that market as far as those brands. And now he's seeing tons of Scandinavian people actually buy the Chinese brands versus a brand like like Tesla. So anyway, I could go on and on about why I'm very bearish on this stock. But here's the kicker. I don't know if I can sell it short. I don't know if this is something that I'm going to be doing in the portfolio. Before I go into why, let me go over a stock that I'm really bearish, or excuse me, really bullish on. And this, again, is probably going to come as no surprise to you guys. But that would be the Sprott Uranium Trust. And for a variety, for, you guys know all the reasons. I'm preaching to the choir here. But over the long run, I think this is a complete no-brainer. But will I buy it for the new model portfolio? Now, will I buy this for my other long-term portfolio? Absolutely. As soon as that yield curve is no longer inverted, assuming we get that bull steepener, then whatever price this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a buyer for sure. But does it fit for the brand new shorter term trading portfolio? I don't know. I, I don't really think so. Now, I could change my mind after talking to Steve, because remember, I'm going to St. Bart's on Sunday, and I'm going to be spending two weeks with the guys there nonstop just really trying to absorb as much as I can on the strategies they've used for the last 30, 40 years that have made them successful traders to the point where they quite literally made billions of dollars. But let's go over to the binomial calculator and I'll tell you why right now I'm thinking I might not be able to add these to the shorter term portfolio. So just in case you guys didn't see the video the other day, uh, this is a really, really cool uh, online calculator that I used to use in business and uh, a lot of other areas, but I think it's going to be really relevant to setting up the overall strategy moving forward as opposed uh, uh, in uh, reference to this shorter term investing. So we start with the probability of a successful outcome. So let's just say we're flipping a coin. You got 
well, let's just assume for a moment there's a 55% chance for whatever reason you get tails. Okay, so that's going to be our successful outcome is going to be tails, just for this example. So we're going to say, okay, 55%. Now, the number of trials, let's just assume for a moment, that's going to be 10. So the number of successes, so this is where we're going for a break even, assuming that we are able to set up our bet or our trade with the ability to, if we lose, we lose 100%. And if we win, we win 100%. Again, trying to create a scenario like you would have in the game of blackjack. Now, we're not betting the whole portfolio, obviously, but that would be the one unit of measurement. Either I'm going to lose 100% of that unit or I'm going to win 100% of that unit. So, And I know that's not possible, but just for the hypothetical, that's going to be our starting point. Okay, so in order to break even, obviously, we'd have to have five, uh, at least five, well, I guess in order to break even, we'd have to have five, period, because then we're going to lose five, we're going to gain five, or net zero, okay? So then you go through the probability. Uh, let's see here. Did I... Bear with me, guys. Can you give me just a heads up, or can you give me a signal in the live chat to see if I am still streaming uh, everything's working fine is it really okay so let me go back to, for some reason that binomial calculator said that i lost connections let me go back to that uh, let me just refresh okay let's try this one more time so the probability of successful tr is uh 55 percent uh number we're going to do 10 and then five just as our break even point now let's go ahead and calculate okay so what this means is if I only make 10 bets with the portfolio, I have a 26% chance of actually losing money, even though I've got a 55% chance of having a successful bet. So you think you've got an edge, but I really wouldn't call that an edge if you have a 26% probability of losing money. Like if you're a casino, that's not going to pan out because, you know, you go through enough spins, if you will, and sooner or later, you're going to lose money because 26% is just too high. Where if you look at the odds of a casino winning, it's going to be pretty much 100%. Well, it is going to be 100% because they have so many spins. You get the law of large numbers like we talked about in that last video. So for me, this is not acceptable. So I would want this much higher. So let's see what we need to do to get that higher. We're just going to go up to 10,000 to take it to an extreme here. And then we're going to have 5,000. So based on these numbers, you can see now we're the casino. Now we're the house. The probability of losing money, if you have a 55% chance of winning, and again, remember, when you lose, you lose 100% of your bet. And when you win, you win 100%. Uh, the probability of losing money would be basically zero. Probability of making money would be 100%. That's what we want. <laughs> or as close to that as possible. So what this tells us is if I bet, if I take two bets, First of all, my bet size based on 30 units would be, let's just say $3,000 because we've got a $100,000 portfolio. So, that, you know, 3.3,300, uh, 3, something like that. So if I only make two bets, then I'm only putting, let's just say $7,000, 7% of the portfolio. And then I've got a 26% chance of losing. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever because even if I win... You know, I, I'm not winning enough to take the risk because I'm just not betting enough, you see? And so what most people, what their approach would be, and this would be my approach if I had never discovered the, this binomial calculator or, you know, the 
uh, principles of blackjack is I would just look at that Tesla and I would say, yeah, let's do it. Let's short this or let's just buy uranium. But what I wouldn't think about is my odds of losing, even if my probability was above a coin toss of 50%. Now you may say, George, well, the probability of you making money in uranium is way higher than 55%. Uh, yeah, over the long run, but over the short run, over the next six months, I mean, who knows? Who knows? And we have to realize that the best to ever do this, guys like Stan Druckenmiller, were only right about 55% of the time. So as a beginner here, with no experience whatsoever, can George Gammon expect to have a higher win rate than Stan Druckenmiller? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. You've got to be realistic about that. So my point is, in order for the Tesla bet, let's just go back to this chart here. In order for this Tesla bet to play out, I would have to be in it for, let's just say, at least six months or a year. I mean, what's it going to do in the, last, in the next week? I mean, who knows? Who knows? Or what, uh, based on my analysis. Now, if I was into the technical charts and I saw a specific pattern, I'm looking at the candlesticks and that might change. But that means my analysis, my upfront analysis needs to evolve. And maybe St. Bart's and the guys there will help me do that. But based on how I'm looking at it right now, I would have to be in this for, let's just say, six months. The exact same thing with uranium. Probably at a minimum to make sure that my odds of winning were over 50% or hopefully even over 55 But what that means is I'm not going to be able, if all my bets are six-month bets, then I, I can't bet enough. Because let's say that I'm using 30 units for my, uh, I'm dividing my portfolio into 30 units. Okay, well, if I'm making six-month bets, then I'm putting 60 units at play, 30 units twice. So now let's go back to the binomial calculator. Well, I don't know what this is. Okay, and let's keep the 55%, but let's do 60 trials. And then let's do, let's do 30 just to see where our break even is. And let's calculate. And look, I, I've got an 18% chance of losing money. And I've got a 25% chance of losing or just breaking even. I, for, for me, that doesn't work. That, that's really not worth my time. So what needs to change is if I want to have a six-month window, the, I need more asymmetry in the bets I win and lose. So I would have to structure this some way, and I have no idea if this is even possible, but this is what I need to, to, to learn. This is what I need to find out. I would have to have asymmetry. In other words, for each losing bet, let's say I lost 50%, but each winning bet, I made 100. Well, now all of a sudden, it may make sense. I'd have to run the, uh, the, the numbers again to make sure that now I did have an edge, but uh, I would have to adjust something. That's really my point. And if you're not looking at the data, if you're not looking at the probabilities through the lens of blackjack or through the binomial calculator, you would never, ever, ever, ever know that in order to have a mathematical edge, you have to adjust the asymmetry if you're taking six-month bets. No matter how certain you are, those bets will come to fruition. Because at the end of the day, there are no certainties. There are only probabilities. And it's totally unrealistic for any of us to assume that we're going to have a better batting average than Stan Druckenmiller. And the exact same thing holds true for uranium. 
if you give me 10 years, I can say with a pretty high degree of confidence, uranium is going to be higher. Now, how much higher? I don't know. I don't know. And I would have to know. And, and, and even if I did uh, know that it's going to be twice as high or something like that, I still can't put that in my short-term portfolio because that's what it's all about. It's about your monthly P&L. So thinking out loud, I, I can already tell you what I'm going to have to do is figure out a way to take much shorter term bets. And I'm going to have to figure out a way to have at least a little bit of asymmetry, if possible, with each one of those bets. So here's what I'm thinking. And again, I'm going to get into this a lot more tomorrow on the webinar on Rebel Capitalist Pro. And you can check that out at georgegammon.com forward slash pro. And that's uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time, by the way. What I'm thinking is just initially to get my feet wet, taking bets on the S&P 500 and using the yield curve as a guide as to whether I'm going long or short. Because if I'm just betting on the S&P 500, it's like, uh, you know, what's what's the ETF, Josh? The S and P five hundred. I forgot the ticker symbol, but you guys probably S P Y. S P Y. Thank you. Um, so if I'm just playing that, then I can look and see. Okay, where do I think this is going to go over the next week? And I can have a lot of tailwind based on the fact that bull markets usually take the stairs up and the elevator down. In other words, bull markets or the market moves are usually a lot slower and trend the uh, bull market higher. And then when they go into a bear market, bam, they just crash violently and very quickly. And I had a picture of this and I used that for the thumbnail for that last video we did. Let's see, actually, you know what? If I just go to the chart of the S&P 500, you guys are gonna be able to see that. It's, it's, it's very obvious. So let's just go to, oh, come on. My internet's been terrible today. US, there it is. S&P 500. And this only goes back to uh, 1980, but uh, I mean, you can get it. it. It's it's usually trending higher, usually. Uh, even when the market's flat, like if you go from 97 to 2009, uh, it pretty much didn't move at all, and it would have obviously lost value in real terms. But even during that time frame, you're still up, let's say, two days to every one day, you're down. So assuming this plays out further into the future, especially when the curve is still inverted, you would likely be able to get the probabilities up higher than just 55%, even if you're doing this on a weekly basis. And this is going to allow you to place more bets, which is going to get you closer to that uh, law of large numbers, where instead of there being a 26% probability that you're actually going to lose money even though you might have a probabilistic edge with what you're deciding to place your bet on uh it's going to take that from 26 you know down to maybe six or maybe four and that's something for me that would be acceptable if over the long run if i'm executing this strategy if i've got a 95 percent chance of coming out ahead regardless of what i'm doing day to day or even month to month for that matter that to me would be the definition of having an edge. Being able to lose 25% on any given month or any given year, for, for me, that's that's not an edge. All right, I think I'll go ahead and leave it there, guys. Uh, I've got a lot more information, a lot more details to dive into based on this strategy that I'm going to start using at the beginning. And to be clear, I could completely abandon this after a week 
of being in St. Bart's. In fact, I could abandon it after a day because I'll go over this with Steve. And Josh, you know Steve very, very well. Uh, he's the type of guy that he'll just look at you. Well, I can't use profanity here, but he would use quite a bit of profanity in telling you how stupid he thought you were and how dumb that, <laughs> and how dumb that strategy is and only a complete idiot would use it. Uh, he'll tell me that probably within the first three minutes, uh, which would be nice because I won't have to waste a lot of time <laughs> doing trial and error on trying to figure out my good old binomial calculator. Uh, so you got to stay tuned. I'm going to be giving you guys updates and whatnot. But if you want to learn more about how my starting point, uh, we're going to be going over that in the webinar tomorrow. And again, that's 10, excuse me, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And you can check that out at georgegammon.com forward slash pro. On that note, guys, enjoy the rest of your evening. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market, capitalism. We'll see you in the next video.